Make sure you, yeah. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Hi, congrats for you. We're here, we're out. I can't believe it. Um, my name is Elena Brokaw. I am the executive director at the Museum of Ventura County. I am delighted to be here. Uh, this is the first big event that the museum has given since March 6th of 2020. I um, love doing events with Ivor because my number one job is to introduce him and then get out of the way because nobody wants to hear from me. Um, this is Ivor Davis. I have introduced Ivor many times. None of you needs to learn anything more about him because you all know about him. I have referred to him as a living treasure oh. of Ventura County. <laughs> As far as I'm concerned, he's like a, a uh, one of our artifacts. Sorry. I, I, I feel as though I've got one leg in the grave. One of our, one of our priceless pieces of art in our collection. We've acquired him. Um, Ivor, the museum truly owes you a huge debt for bringing so many wonderful programs to all of us. And uh, so without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to you to introduce the evening. Thank you very much and uh, lovely to see so many faces because I've always forgotten what your faces look like, but here they are. And it's not quite the same as Zoom, although everybody on Zoom, hi. Sorry. Um, now, I can say a lot about Harry Benson, but I think you will agree that when you watch this trailer, you're gonna learn a lot about Harry in a short period of time. So I'm going to ask you if you wouldn't mind hitting the, hitting the trailer for everybody to see, and we'll be back in a, a few moments. Uh, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great joy to introduce Harry Benson. Thank you very much. Um, Harry, before I let you loose on this crowd, I want to say it's a delight and a privilege to have you here in our town of Ventura. And also his wife Gigi and, and their children and their grandchildren. So thank you for coming tonight. I, I, I always like to say, Hang on, Harry. That we, that we, Harry and I are practicing a nightclub act, by the way, which we will be taking to Broadway next month. So remember right. that. Anyway, the wrong um, way. What, what I like to say, Harry, is that there was a guy called Derek Taylor that we all met on the Beatles press tour. He was their press officer. And he used to say, and I love this line, he used to say, aren't we having a good time? And don't we deserve it? <laughs> and we deserve it, don't we? Absolutely. P particularly, particularly uh, having been so distant from each other, it's great to be back and have some degree of normalcy in our lives. Um, also, I want to give a special thanks to Gigi Benson, who curated Harry's vast photo library. And I apologize to her in advance because she sent me several hundred pictures, and I thought, well, are we going to be here until midnight? <laughs> Probably not. So I think let's, be, be, Harry, before we see your wonderful pictures, let's, let me ask you this. Um, tell us a wee bit about your background in Scotland and how you came to join the London Daily Express and uh, uh, give us the early background of that, Harry, would you? Well, my first newspaper job was a, a weekly newspaper in Scotland, the west of Scotland, called the Hamilton Advertiser. But it also was the paper that David Livingston, the Scottish uh, explorer, 
to Africa, you know, what for? And he lived, he lived in Hamilton. And um, so I came from a good newspaper, a good local newspaper. I, I tarnished it a bit, you know. <laughs> it wasn't the same after. You know. But, and I, from there I went to a gate crashed a party in London, but the, the person that saw me was Lord Beaverbrook, and he asked me if I would join the Daily Express, London Daily Express, and I did. And um, Wasn't that everybody's dream, Harry, to, to join a big newspaper with four to five million readers. I mean, didn't you dream of that? Oh, absolutely. I was then, you know, I, all, all of a sudden I'm traveling around the world, you know, and, and, um, and here we are today. Here we are today being, well, um, being, being humiliated. <laughs> but, um, By the way, Harry, my best of all of this is, this is I've what... got my family with me. <laughs> Because they take up three quarters of the crowd. You know? <laughs> uh, I did warn you that you and I would do this. Would we rehearse our comedy act for, yeah. for, for next next week? We get it done to a, done to a t. Um, so let, why don't we? Um, why don't we, Santiago? Why don't we look at this? Harry's cut. Harry's covers. No, but wait a minute. I'll say. Okay, I work gonna, with, wait ahead. a minute. I'll say. I work with Ivor Davis. For a long time, every time I went to LA, I would come off the plane and say, I hope Ivor's found some stories. He found everybody on Hitchcock, Mary Tyler Moore, everybody, Doris Day. Um, yeah, Bing Crosby, remember Bing, him? Bing Crosby. Yeah. And that was you that got yeah. it. And, but, and, but, but Harry no, always complained. It. Sorry, Harry. You complained that I took you to Torn Curtain and a lot of movies to work on that just did, that were disasters. Disaster. Well, they were good too. Um, the, the disasters were good, you know. <laughs> it made you, you know, you get the fun with them, you know. Thank you. Okay, so once again, let's, <laughs> let's see if we can get from Santiago a couple of pictures up there and then then we'll stop Harry and tell it and get him to um, tell us a little bit about it. So hit it for us, Santiago. Okay, Harry, what's that? This is about Glasgow 1955, 56. And I, I was working for the London Daily Sketch of me and I would look for pictures. And, and in Glasgow, they never had swimming pools. You know, it's, but the kids used to have to swim in a, you know, a municipal fountain, which weren't too clean, you know. <laughs> yeah. But they were having a good time, you know. Um, okay, Santiago, can you move it along a bit because we got more famous. Ah, Harry, tell it, us about it, that guy. This is the last time Winston Churchill went to Harrow. And they had put, um, that was his old school, and they had put a line in the song which went, and Churchill's name shall win a claim through each new generation. And everyone was crying because he died about a few months after that. And I'm glad I had photographed Churchill. I photographed him a few times actually, but this was the last time. And you also photographed some other famous people. Yeah, there was a queen there. It went down a mine. And this was a new mine in Scotland that we're very proud of. The only problem is after she came out, about two weeks later, the, the mine collapsed. Oh, my God. No one was in it except a bunch of, you know, pigeons or something. But it, the mine collapsed. She's, what managed, a to keep, she's what? managed to keep her job, hasn't she? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there she is. There she is. And she got the seat, see that red box. She gets that every day from 
10 Downing Street from the Prime Minister telling, telling her what is going on in the world, what is going on with Parliament, what is, is what the secrets are. And, then she, and I said, can you show me it? And she went and closed it. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, but that, well, that's for that box. That came from 10 Downing Street to Buckingham Palace every day with what's happening. So for, next one. For the next picture, there's going to be a change of pace. I think, Santiago, if you, here we go. Harry, <laughs> Harry, that, I'm just going to introduce that. Gotcha. This is Harry's incredibly iconic picture. But Harry, how did you get them to do that? Well, they hadn't quite broken through, but they had, they had just, they did, you know that song, All My Love and Close Your Eyes, I don't know, that they had just, and they wanted publicity, and when people want publicity, I will, they will do, well, they'll have pillow fight on the bed, <laughs> you know, and that's what they did, they would have stayed there all night. Yes. They, after a month or two, they wouldn't have done anything because making a lot of money, you know. But didn't you have to orchestrate it a little bit? Inspire it with the conductor? No, I just, just have a good time and, you know, they knew what to do. And, and oh, I will say, first of all, they said, oh, no, no. And John Lennon said, no, this makes us look silly and stupid it's time we were mature and they all agree yeah yeah but john has slipped away and paul is saying no it's, we start looking ridiculous and john came up behind him and banged him in the back of the head <laughs> with a pillow and that, then of course they had we had fun and there were a lot of pictures around it but that was the one for that you know it made sense that's a great picture can you move it on for the next one, Santiago? What, was that Ed Sullivan? That's Ed Sullivan. Right. That, Harry, man, you all saw the Ed Sullivan. You Harry know. was the first photographer off the plane when they came in to New York. Yes. I've seen pictures. I know it happened. Um, can you remember and tell us what was the atmosphere like? Did they think they were going to be big? Um, they were very worried that they weren't going to be accepted very, very well, because there were, there were negative stories of, of the people were calling them, you know, communists, because it was a time of communists was, you know, and John in particular was worried, but then he relaxed and, and he did a great show on the, you, you must have seen it then, you, we know, I know how old you all are, you know. Uh, so there's another great picture coming up, Santiago. Okay. Now, Harry, I'm, I'm going to stop you because I'm a, I know you're a great storyteller. Tell us how you set this picture up. It was brilliant. Well, the Beatles are in town in Miami. And they were looking for publicity. Sure, I took them to the beach, fine. But then we had a boxer named Cassius Clay, who later became Muhammad Ali. And I went to see him and I asked him if I could take the Beatles. And he said, sure. <laughs> but when the Beatles went, went to him, the Beatles were used to them being the big guy, the boss. But he completely put them in their place. <laughs> he completely dwarfed them. And uh, it was like um, the Beatles would get kind of smart, alecky smart guys, but no. Cassius Clay, Put them in the place. You've got to call me your lordship, and <laughs> and you know who you're talking to. And they were completely intimidated by him, 
he was better than, than they were, you know. No, he, he's one of the great characters that I'd met, you know. Funny, but, but clever, you know. Until with the Beatles, you know. I mean, in the documentary, Harry, you said you had a funny line about the, you know, the Beatles only like you if you're good looking or something like that. Yeah, if you were ugly alone around the Beatles, <laughs> or they were terribly rude, they were they wouldn't talk to someone that, <laughs> that was ugly. And there was a guy on there before me, and they didn't like him because he was ugly. <laughs> and I have to admit, he was ugly. <laughs> <laughs> but that too. That, because we're dealing with these guys were like 21, 22, 20, 21, you know, I mean, they were young. But they were also very clever, and the music was terrific. But they were full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> there were other pictures coming up um, uh, of other, other Beatles. Ah, Paul, it, tell us about Paul and you. Yeah. Paul I stayed in, in touch with because he was always doing something that was interesting for a magazine like Life and, um, and People. And um, his wife was actually, was very old then and she, she died, you know, Linda. Was Paul the most charming of them all in your mind? Yes, he was. He was most um, aware of the of the press and his celebrity power. He was a good guy, though. You know, I mean, because there he is. He did that for me. You know, you know that's what. You know, I, uh, okay. but I never get too close with a celebrity. I never did because. I don't want them to phone me up in the night and say, oh, Harry, that picture of me in the, <laughs> in the, in the bubble bath, please don't use it. Now you've got a problem because you've got a friend, you know what I mean? You know, it's a problem. That's a problem. But, but don't you have to do that to, to do the work you've done, to have the body of work you did? Don't you have to schmooze with them? Yes. Don't you have to be nice to them? Yeah, but there's a point of no return you don't go over. You're not giving away your... Because, you know, you know, we help them a lot. We give them this, I'm giving them Life magazine of people or the London Daily Express. You're giving them, you, you know, it, it, it's a trade-off, you know. It, you, you might get the cover of Life of people. You might get it, but only if you're good. Does that make sense with you? <laughs> You know, do you know what I mean? Okay, can we have the next picture, please? A slight change of pace, I think. Don't go. There we go. Mia, Mia, Mia Farrow. Yeah, that's before. That's that is like the day after she had a date with Sinatra. Yes. You know. Yes. And. Uh, She's up there and she's so simple and she's saying, because we knew she had been seen with Sinatra. You know, he's, he's you know, he's, that's, you know, <laughs> you know, he's been around a lot of girls and uh, she was with him and acting very childish, you know. She was, yeah. she was. I was with Harry at the time yes. and she took us back to her apartment, her duplex in Beverly Hills. That's Right. And Harry did these wonderful pictures, and she was a no, she was naive and a novice, at, and, right. and um and you know when you look when you look at it today and you see what's happened you know the whole Woody thing life is strange yeah that's right okay look at her, can yeah. we move on good Judy Judy Garland what I liked about her was she used to swear like a tripper. <laughs> you know the worst language, <laughs> really. But she was funny. She was. She would. She would just. Uh, you, there was no one else like her. 
and a tremendous talent, you know, and... Harry, a, a lot of tremendous talents, like Judy, like Presley, um, they all died so young. When you were with Judy shooting her there, was she ever out of control? No, but you see, she was fragile. You know, you could see it and... Yeah. and uh, you know, it was like after you had finished, you're finishing taking pictures with like, she would touch you and say, please be good to me. So she took it. She was a bit fragile lady. I liked her very much because we all grew up with her, you know. And we have a slight change of pace for the next picture, I think. The bingo. Remember that, Harry? Yes, you we were with it. Yes, we were with that together on the in Colorado. That's his son there. Oh, yeah. the young son. Yeah, well, he, he looks yeah. like a midget. But <laughs> <laughs> but I remember Harry. I want to tell you that we uh, we went to see Bing, uh, Bing Crosby in this movie Stagecoach, which yeah. was a don't don't knock your kids. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we, so we went to see Bing Crosby. Harry and I went out to Colorado, remake of Stagecoach, right. and Harry charmed the socks off of Crosby, who was not really the warmest man, was he? No, he liked the idea because I would I was born in Troon in Scotland, and Troon had one of the biggest golf courses in the world, <laughs> and I mentioned. Uh, that I played golf on the old course at Troon, and oh, you did, didn't you? That, that you know, he liked that idea because he was crazy for golf. Yes, he was always he may have a golf club in his hand there, yeah. right? Um, next one, please. Oh my god, oh, this is the Watts riot, the which are very bad. And, and, 1965. Yeah, very bad. The trouble was, I went in with a car and I went out of the car to take pictures like this. And then I would go back to the car and there was no police around. And, and there were people who lived around there were coming back on the streets. You know, and they were angry, but, but I was lucky cops came, cops came down in a car and the door opened and one shouted, hey, stupid, get in here quick to get me out of this, of the ghetto, you know, it was very bad and, and um, on. Yeah, well, I, I'm going to, I'm going to interrupt you because that, I want to remind you, Harry, and I think you remember, you called me during the Watts riots and you said, pick me up at the airport. That's right. I'm coming in. That's so I picked him up at the airport and I'm sorry to occupy time, but I picked him up at the airport. He said, take me to the riots. <laughs> okay. That's I right. kid you not. And I drove to the riots and there were snipers on the roof and yeah. there was buildings burning and people were screaming. And Harry suddenly had this invisible armor plated facade. He was invisible. I got under my car, he got out and started shooting pictures. I, I, mean, I, I mean, I was never more scared in my life. No, you could hear the bullets hit in the car, you know. <laughs> you, so, 10 you minute, Harry, 10 minutes later, he comes back and says, okay, let's go down to AP. I've got some great pictures. And in those days, you had to go down and radio pictures. But Harry was immortal. Harry, were you immortal? Did you think you were immortal? I never asked you that. If you ask me now, I will tell you the same as you. We were uh, ambitious. That, you know, you're going to, you know. That, that's all it is. Yeah. And, and here I am, here, showing off. <laughs> <laughs> a selection of stuff you talked to show you that it wasn't a, sh a, a, a cozy afternoon, was it? No, it was not. No, we had the bullets banging off the. <laughs> yeah. And here we are sitting here, cocky, showing off, you know. 
there's my family over there. They're, they're very <laughs> critical of me. They're very beautiful. They, you have a good looking family, Harry. Yes, I'm, I'm, more, more pictures of Watts, right? That's Watts, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Um, well, no, that was a. The Watts were the worst of all of them because they hadn't happened before and the police didn't know how to handle it, basically. Yes. They were going to the wrong places. You know. Ne next picture, please. Again, more Watts stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That's right, looking down them and oh, they were. Next one, please. Same. Yeah, I mean, so I was under my car. You were running around with the camera. They, they were bad night. Was, you were there. Come on, you were there. I would say, I, I, I didn't see anything. I was under the car, there, Harry. There, no, no. <laughs> but we finished up at the Beverly Hills Hotel. It's not bad, <laughs> you know. You're not supposed <laughs> to say that. It's all the story. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Okay. This is that's whole... the the James that's the James Meredith March. That was one of the uh, Martin Luther King. It was, uh, there was a lot of trouble on that one in uh, Mississippi. Mississippi of all the of all the South was the worst. If if you went there, you could be guaranteed something awful is going to happen. You know. Guaranteed. Other ones, you know, bad, but not as bad. Well, what was it like for you with the Scottish accent to go down to the south? Scottish accent, maybe the best accent I could have. <laughs> you know, because they would say, I'm from Scotland too. I would name a place in Ireland. I mean, and I would say, I'm <laughs> No, I'm from Tipperary, and I would, and that would be fine with me. I'd say, yeah, that's Scotland. Oh, give me a break. <laughs> you know what I mean? Any old thing you would say. This was a this was a tough time. Tell us about. That's Martin Luther King in the middle, and that's uh, Jet who is he? No. Who? John, John Lewis. Lewis. Congressman. Yeah. John Lewis and the other one in Abernathy. Yeah. They were the three leaders, but there's Martin there. He was, he was a, he was a great guy, a nice man, uh, uh, tough. Yeah. You know, he got he got beaten up a few times. You know, yeah. and he he told me one night, I said that that was terrible what had happened. And he said it's terrible being black in this country. I always remember him telling me that. Next picture, please. Okay, Harry. That's after he was shot. I went, I was about 20 minutes away and uh, before his burial. That's him there and... Yeah. Next. Next picture, please. I said, taking Martin's body off the plane in Atlanta. For the burial, that's Martin Luther King. That's his wife, Coletta, with the with his the children, as they're taking the body off Martin's body off the plane. Uh, next picture, Santiago. Okay, now all of a sudden this guy pops up. Who is this good-looking fellow with a, a, a genial grin? He is Bobby Shelton, the leader of the Ku Klux Klan, and. And he's holding the gun that shot Mrs. Liuzzo, a, a civil rights leader in in Mississippi. And, and that he was the leader of the Klan. But Harry, when you get in with a guy like that, is he looking for publicity? Does he give you a good welcome? No, he, 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 he yes, he he was polite, but what he was showing was. We're as strong as we don't care. We don't, you know, that's, you know, we are the Ku Klux Klan and white supremacist. And, um, but he did allow me to photograph him. You know, there's a Klan meeting and Bobby Shelton warned me. He said, whatever you do, 
don't hang around this clan meeting tonight. It's dangerous. Don't stay more than 10 minutes. And this was the clan, this was Bobby Shelton, the leader. And this was when they burned the cross and he said, they're angry. So I did, I left. I got in the car and went back. But this is an interesting picture, isn't it? Another one you shot while you were there. Yes, she was uh, a woman, the woman in the clan, they come to be blessed too by, you know, they throw water on them. I hope there are no clan meeting, no clan people here tonight. You, know? Next. you never know. <laughs> okay, slight change of pace. Yeah. How did, how did you manage to get James to do that? That James Brown? Yes, and um, I said, I'd like you to do something you, you won't do, is do the splits, because it was all, it was always, I feel fine, split, and, 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 he, and he, he did it in front of me. He was showing off to his pals, his friends, you know. I liked him, he was a funny guy. And another guy who, was, who took, did pretty well in his career, didn't he? Yes, what's his name? The boss, is that the boss? Yeah, that's it, yes. With Springsteen, Thank yes. You. Yeah. Yeah, he, yeah, he would sing. He would sing all night long, actually. If you ask them to sing, it's an amazing thing about singers. If you ask them to sing, they won't stop. <laughs> no, I'm not joking. They did, because they love to sing, you know? Another guy that sang. Yeah, he was the same. He was singing dance. There he is. Yeah. But, but, but yeah. Harry, I mean, I know that you got on well with him and he, and he liked you. So mm -hmm. how did, you know, how was he to, to, to work with? Well, he likes it. It all depends. Who, I, mean, I mean, I'm, I'm going, I'm giving him something as well. I'm giving him Life magazine of people or, or uh, you know. It, Fantasy tale. Vanity Fair. I mean, yes, you, you, I'm not going in empty handed. I'm not saying, um, you know, it's publicity they want for nothing. You know, that, you know, that's the way I look at it. It doesn't always work that way. But, it's but he was relaxing. You had, you, he was comfortable with you. You got that great picture. I think there's another one, isn't there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there he is, the king. The king, he, was, he liked to be the, he loved the throne. That was the bottom of his bed. He had this throne. He said, I feel more comfortable like this. Now, I'm not going to laugh at him because, you know, he, he was a tremendous talent. Really a tremendous. He could sing and dance. He went on for about three hours, you know, like I've never seen anyone else do. And do all kinds of things. He would come off and he was completely washed out, you know, but, but he did it. Yeah. He did it. He was a great performer. Oh. That's um, Mick. Mick Jagger. <laughs> you know. It. He's still going strong, Mick. Yeah. I think he had a baby two years ago. <laughs> no, he, he didn't have a baby. No, no I didn't know that. I, <laughs> didn't, know I that. didn't know that. It's new. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay, so now we're getting to the great presidents that Harry photographed. And um, if, if you hit it again, we'll, we'll, we'll kneel down. Okay, get on with it. Yep. Okay. Kennedy. Yeah, he looked to me. This is in London. Or was it in Scotland? But they're in the rain. And he just kept looking at, you know, he gave me a photograph, made connection. And after he did it, he kind of nodded and, and spoke to his wife and went on his way. You know, then he was shot. He was That's a great picture, Harry. You don't need a face. Do you remember when you shot that? Yes, it was in the mountains. Uh, Laurentian Mountains in, in Canada. I go up a hill, freezing cold, and she's at the top of the hill because one of the secret service guys told me where she was. And he said, don't tell her I told you. 
<laughs> but I'd been with this guy before in different secret service guys, and he was shivering. Yeah, you find her up there, over there. No, no, there, you know. And they're up there, and she, she couldn't escape me, you know, top of a mountain. Oh, that's, that's when, when Richard Nixon um, resigned. Re resigned. Yeah. I liked working with Nixon, President Nixon. He never once refused, refused to do something. Or other. He would do it one way or another, but he did. I, I liked him. Yeah. Now, that picture, Harry, is a gem. So tell us how you got them to do it. Well, they both were in show business. And um, I said, what I would like to do with you is dance with each other. And, and Ronnie was kind of, well, but his wife said, you've got to do it for me. <laughs> so she told them that to dance and that, that yeah. basically was it. And then you, so it made a, it was the most successful cover in Vanity Fair. Let me show up to tell you that it, it was. Vanity Fair was thinking of closing because it wasn't doing well. And this isn't bullshit. She, this picture, Turned it, them it around. Sold, it sold very well. Yeah. I'm, 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 this is the only one I'll show off about, okay? But that's what happened. Remember and, it, what? and here's another picture coming up about that one, Harry. I mean, my gosh, look at that. Yeah. Well, he was very good looking. And he had an eye for the girls. <laughs> you know, and I asked her, I'd, and he was lying down on the on the canopy, and I, I said to Hillary, Hillary, go and give him a kiss. Huh? And she she went and dived on top of him. <laughs> that, that's exactly how it happened, you know. Yeah. He, but he was a good looking guy. And you know, Obama. Cold. Yeah. You know, but, but he was fine, but he wasn't going to lie in a hammock with his wife, you know. <laughs> Good point. Yeah. Now, okay, now, Harry, let me just preface this. <laughs> Harry, you've got this guy to do things, and we're going to see why, but tell us a little bit about this guy. He would do anything. <laughs> he would. He would do anything. He say he would say to her, "This doesn't sound like a good idea." And the next thing he got, he was grabbing the legs, and that was more than I really asked for, you know. How about that, Harry? There's, is there a story there? There is a story there because no one ever gets photographed with money. It's so tacky. <laughs> it's, it's so awful, you know. <laughs> And I said to him, I said to him, I want to go there and uh, this was in a casino. I want you to hold a million dollars. He said, where is it? And <laughs> so they come out and piled up and I said, are you sure it's a million? He said, it's nearly two million, you know. And so there he is smiling, you know. You know, that. that, that. Okay, we're going to change the tenor a little bit. Oh, tenor is changed. I was with Bobby Kennedy. This is uh, Bobby Kennedy in, um, in Ambassador, Ambassador Hotel, Hotel yep. in, in California, in Los Angeles, yep. in Los California, down the coast. And um, Bobby said, and on to Chicago, where they're going to be there you know, the... Uh, the convention. The convention. Yeah. And a big cheer went up. And Bobby turns. He was going to go through the crowd way for an exit door. But in the last 
second, he seemed to have turned around and headed towards the kitchen. And I, I followed him about six or eight yards behind. So it was like going from the happiness into hell because I went through the door behind Bobby and he went off to the right and I was going to have to get out here to the left. Then I heard a sort of crack like a gun and I turned and Bobby was falling sort of slow motion to the floor. Then all, then the screaming and the, and it all, it, it, it was hellish. But it was a, a day that, that was, it was important for me to, to do my job. That picture, Harry. And to do my job. Yeah. Look at that picture. Yeah. And um, I said, I like mess up tomorrow, not now. This is it because it, the the room was the room was going just swaying back and forward, and the, and the Kennedy people didn't know how to handle it. But it, that something like this had never happened before. You know, there is someone, but it, it was somebody I liked, and now all of a sudden, you know, he's. He's dying, you know, but the, okay, I'll tell you, the blood was pouring out the back of his head, you know, like there. And, um, you know, uh, Harry, look, look. I'm going to give you a slightly different perspective of, of what you've just said. And I know you remember it. I was about 20 yards behind. I came into the kitchen. I saw it, Ethel with her hands up. Mm -hmm. I looked around for Harry, who was working the story with me. And there he was standing on the metal table in the kitchen, taking pictures. Um, and I think if you go to the next one, there we go. Yeah, it was, um, it was hell, you know, and because it was somebody you liked, I like Bobby, you know, and you, and you, he was chatting to you and, you know, see you there, see you here, you know, and and there he is, gone. Harry, you've got those incredible pictures that we've seen and more. When you think back, and some people may have said to you, Harry, how could you take a picture when this was happening? Well, i tell you why. Because if I hadn't have taken them, I'd have been more uh, upset because that I, I'm, I'm there not to take a side, but is to record what you, what happens in front of you. I'm, and that's, that's my, that's, that's a profession I chose. It's good and it's bad. Somebody I liked a lot. We used to, and he's obviously in a bad way, you know, and, um, you were doing your job. You were doing what you were. Yes, I was doing. Yeah. Uh, you know that I would have been more upset if I, if I, and I know, I know, a, a, at least two photographers didn't do it. They know I couldn't do it. I don't know how you did it. You know why you did it, why? And, and, but I did it. And, yeah. And, but I'm not ashamed to show you. You know what I mean? Take it or leave it. You know. And there were a couple of other pictures like this one. Yeah, that's, this one. that is the blood he's on that somebody, somebody, one of his, one of the little Can't girls, be. you know, with a bare boat has put it on when Bobby lay and just removed him. He was just pouring out of there. And um, it's, it was a bad night, you know. Next picture, please. But I show them to you, you know what I mean? There, yeah, that's taking Bobby from New York to um, to was Washington, it? Arlington Cemetery. It was on the train. They were lining the train. Uh, the, the, and the train had only to do, only with sometimes doing about five miles an hour. 
It took about five hours to get from New York to Washington because of people lining the the tracks, the track there, yeah. uh, carrying Bobby yeah. uh, for burial. Uh, what? Harry, here's a professional question that photographers in the audience will probably like. When did you realize that you had caught, captured that horrible moment in history of Bobby being gunned down? At what stage did you realize you had these incredible pictures? No, I, it, it, so that, that, it, it was like, it's like maybe I didn't take them at all, you know, that something else had come in my place, you, you know what I mean? It was so, it, it was so awful to find a, yeah. Somebody who, who used to call me Harry, it's now who gone. Yeah. You and know? Also, I, I'll tell you this because Harry and I were on the campaign together, and you got very close. And Harry was even closer because he was taking these incredible pictures. So he got even closer to Bobby than I did. So, it, it, you know, the, the trauma of what you did and what you saw, I should say, must have been horrendous. Yeah, but I'd covered Bobby in different places, like, you know, in Newark and in Atlanta, I covered them in different places leading up to this, you know. And as I said, it was somebody I liked, and uh, you would, he would ask you to have breakfast with him or dinner, you know, so uh, it was, um, it was, it wasn't, he, he, he was a good guy, you know what I mean? Here's the next picture, change of pace, Harry. When I saw that picture, um, I, and I, I was um, astounded, and this shows you how, how canny Harry is, how shrewd he was. Um, Harry, isn't this the Secret Service agents who you got friendly with, ironing the ball gown of Martha Mitchell, the yes. Attorney General's wife. Yes. Now, is that is, is ironing part of this the in, the Secret Service criteria? A true story. True. To, one of the Secret Service guys said to me, "You took that picture of one of our guys ironing the dress of Martha." Um, he said. He said the boss, Herbert Hoover, called him in and told him his job was not to iron. <laughs> and they, he would, they were, the Hoover was so pissed off at this. <laughs> this wasn't, the, you know, what they were supposed to do. I mean, I must say it was like the, the Secret Service says, number one, you must be able to iron before you apply <laughs> to this job. Yeah. Yeah, I love the fact that Harry was able to. Yeah, well, I mean, she bossed him about. You've got to help me. You've got to do something. You just don't hang around. But then he's, he's guarding. He's guarding. Who is guarding, you know? <laughs> Next one, please. Slight change of pace again, yeah. Harry, about those two. Yep, yeah, Frank and Mia. And. Um, It was the mask, yeah, the mask yeah. For Truman Capote's mask ball. It was Truman Capote's mask ball, and someone near me shouted at Frank Sinatra, "There's a mask bandit," and he, <laughs> Sinatra, was furious, swore at him, and. <laughs> You know, this wasn't, he knew he looked ridiculous. <laughs> yes, he does. Because he doesn't, you know. He... Okay, how did you, here is, a, here is a, a guy who hates the press, who doesn't say much, but Harry Benson shows up oh. and becomes best buddies and takes this picture. That's Bobby Fischer when he beat uh, Boris Spassky in Iceland. And... Uh, it, he hardly spoke, just went, mew, 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 mew. he spoke like that. And uh, anyway, I took him to, uh, uh, after he won the title, the, uh, the chess title, 
I took him to a field in Iceland, just outside Reykjavik. And this horse comes over to him. And Bobby wasn't emotional at all, you know. Was a, never spoke, it was very hard to speak to anyone. But the horse came over and touched him. And Bobby said, Harry, it likes me, it loves me. And he showed me so soft. This is man, he never, you know, didn't relate to anyone, you know, except the horse. But I, I like it, I was touching, you know. It, it, that's why I have the picture, because of that. We've, we've moved on. I mean, I mean, I don't know much about, it was Solzhenitsyn. Solzhenitsyn. The, 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 the dissident, the Russian dissident. That's right. The thing about LA, uh, my wife, Gigi, said, that he's got a constipation or a stomach problem. A stomach <laughs> problem. And that wasn't quite what I would mean. He was, Solzhen Eatson was glad to be free, you know what I mean? Yeah. Colin Kennedy's wedding. And, um, it was it was fine, but after she walked a few bits, um, a dog came out. A big dog came out and would, and would jumped all over her wedding gown, you know. And the dog would play, you know, and jump. Thought it was fun and kind of wasn't, you know, what what she wanted. Who oh, is Elizabeth. nuzzling Miss Taylor? Yes. Who is doing oh, the nuzzling? What's his name, Judy? What's his what, name? Richard? Well, Larry Fortenson, Larry Fortenson, husband number eleven. I tried <laughs> on the beach, on the beach at Malibu, you know. Yes, and um, that, that's about it, really. Yeah. I know, but, but but you know, you knew about Liz, and we all knew about yeah. Liz, and and there was the the new love of her life. Uh, I mean, was it a fun shoot? This one? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> No, but she did it, you know. She, yeah. she, she told me that he was the love of his life, and you know, yeah. I mean, where was Richard Burton? You know I me. Mean? Anyway, it's it's a fun well, picture, you know. I mean? Now these are not the uh, Harry. Sorry, these are not the Venus and Serena, are they? Yes, they are. Wow. And they, you they can changed. hardly see them, but you know. Do, do you remember how that happened? And. Uh, and 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 it was it in LA? No, it was, it was in Miami. Was it? it was in Florida. Florida. Yes, in Florida. Yeah, That's and, where. The, um, and did you run into her father? Much remember the the. the yeah. Father? No, the father was not there. That's why I was able to take it ah. because the because the father wanted money. Yes. That was a problem, then, but the father wasn't there. Yeah. I took them for coffee. And we jumped around to this beautiful picture of, of Lady Di. The Lady Di, yes. It's, uh, that wasn't long before she was killed in that traffic accident, car accident. Yeah, but yeah, the marriage wasn't going well. Gilda Radner. Gilda Radner, but I, I don't know who the other guys are. Yeah, who are Anybody they? Anybody know? Dan Aykroyd. John Belushi. They, they, were, they looked so young, didn't they, Harry? Yeah, look. Next. That's right. You know the show. Oh, yeah. Harry, this is a picture. That's Greta Garbo. And I say it because my mother and father would talk about Greta Garbo. You know, so beautiful. <laughs> Oh, and there she, and I'm on the beach down in um, Antigua. Antigua, and a woman in a hotel said, why are you here? You should be on the beach, which is only about two or three hundred yards away. It's Greta Garbo. She said, Greta Garbo. On the beach. I went down there, and a friend on the beach pointed her out. So she had nowhere to go except, <laughs> you know, there, she has a head bobbing above. She you know, I look, want to be alone, you know. Harry, <laughs> Harry, she doesn't look too happy, does she? No, she doesn't. 
she would look in this piece of shit. Right? You know? <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> um, let's do another one. We are running out. Oh, by the way, another guy. Another guy who should have been drowned. That's Roman Polanski. That's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I nearly drowned them. Okay. Uh, anyway, we won't go into. I think you know, Harry. We could. Uh, uh, Gigi's going to bring you back next year, right, Gigi? Um, and, but we are running out of time, and we want the key thing is uh, Elena's going to take some questions because I know Harry could go on all night. And no, uh, I couldn't. Uh, Elena, no, please, I couldn't. Um, let's have some questions for Harry. Thank you. Okay, do I see any hands up? Okay, excuse me. It's right over here. Um, I heard when the questions get asked, the people on Zoom can't hear them, so I'm going to ask you to repeat. Okay. What's that? On Zoom, they can't hear the questions, so I have to repeat them. Oh. Who was the, who was the worst subject in program? Sorry, I, I didn't hear that question. Who was the worst? Who was the worst subject in program? Who is the worst subject Harry Benson has photographed? I think it was you, Dan. I don't think it was that. <laughs> no, it comes unexpectedly. Someone you think would be terrific is controlling, you know that. And someone you think would be awful is opens the opens the yeah. door, you know. It, it, you can't tell what mood they're in. Uh, Jackie Kennedy was fine. She knew what she had to do. Yeah. Uh, Next question. Hang on a second. Do I have a question over here? Who? Somebody. Here you go. Over time, have you had a favorite camera? Cotton, which you feel connected to cameras or they interchange? Okay, the question is uh, over the years, what has been your favorite camera, or have you felt connected to a certain camera? Obviously, a photographer asking the question, I guess. It probably was a Rolleiflex. Uh, that it was a very good camera. And it was easy to use. You know, it's, I think any, I, I never got, got, I never fell in love with a camera. I just, if it could <laughs> do its job, it would. You're fired. Do you know what I mean? Uh, you know, it wasn't. It, you know. Another question? Lord Benson. I have a question about intimacy. What's that? About intimacy? Yes. Obviously, you've gotten very close to many of the people you've photographed. Has there ever been a circumstance where you felt you were too close or invading someone's space? I have to repeat the question, sir. Um, you've got close to many famous people, many people. Has there been any occasions when you felt, Harry, that you got too close to the person? No, no, I've, the closer I get, the better. If I could get them in the bath with no clothes on, that's, I'll take it. <laughs> you know, I'm looking to get as close as I can because that, and uh, because, Another photographer might come in and, 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 and do better. So I want to, to beat the bastards, you know what I mean? <laughs> you follow my point. It, it, you know, it's, you want to get as close as you can and uh, then get out of Dodge, you know? I have a two-part question. Have you ever photographed Vladimir Putin? And if not, would you still like to do so? The question was, have you ever photographed Vladimir Putin? And if you could, would you want to? He is difficult to photograph. He's got the same face all the time. <laughs> that, there's no emotion. And uh, yes, it would, be, it would be good to have him, you know, playing tennis or going in a, or in a swimming pool or, but he's, you know, is he would be 
he would be good to try and get to, you know what I mean? Uh, that to, to, to have a look at him, but he's a, it's not an easy face. Yeah. You know, it's not welcome, come in, you know. <laughs> That's you know, are there any pictures of Harry Benson? Who? So, so was that, that that was a question saying, did you say, what's the question? Are there any pictures of Harry Benson? Yes. What? Well, I, I, I'm not sure I understand the question. Are there any pictures of Harry Benson? I think there are. Yeah, they, they are. I who, who uh, 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 my, my, my wife Gigi and my son-in-law. Do you like having your picture taken by them? No, no, no. <laughs> no. Another question. Mary, I wonder if you're completely retired, and uh, and uh, if so, when did you stop doing this sort of photography? Um, question was for the Zoom audiences: um, Are you retired now, Harry? And um, do you do any more? photography now i would do anything at all i it's a photograph is photography was basically i don't know what i would have done if i had to have worked for my living <laughs> photography has been been fun you know just being paid for taking for what do you okay G gigi uh, says that Harry has an assignment coming up next week. Uh, I don't know if you want to tell us about it, but does Harry know about it? I don't know about it. She'll tell me. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, that's what you live on is doing pictures and you some are assignments, some are better than others, you know. Oh, darling. Okay, the, the answer to the question was, and we're all waiting, it's a famous musician. Harry is going to photograph, and Gigi says, when he does the picture, you will recognize him as soon as you see the picture. That's all she's telling me. But right? you know, I don't know who, what she's talking about. But, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but that's why I'll find out, you know. A question back there. What pictures did you miss? You didn't have your camera or something. Okay, hang, hang on a minute. After we... what, did you, what pictures did you miss taking that you wish you had? Sorry, up for the Zoom audience. What pictures did you miss? Maybe you didn't have your camera with you that you wished you would have got. I missed a lot, but if I miss them, I don't think about them again because you talk. I don't want to torture myself. Oh, why did I have my camera? Apart? Well, you know, because look, I didn't have it, and that's it. So, so if if you miss it, when you miss it, it didn't exist. <laughs> Harry, what was your training for photography? What, what's the backstory in terms of being able to capture all these amazing images? The question is, what was your background to uh, to become a photographer and capture all these wonderful images? What was your background? The, basically, my background was I was no good at school. <laughs> that school bored me. But art didn't, and if, and I don't know what I would have done if someone hadn't invented a camera, because a camera was a way out. Was you know was it was your ticket to ride? The ticket, <laughs> my ticket to pay the bus fare. You know, that's, and it was fun, this gentleman. Yeah. No. I have a no comment. Um, real quick question. At the very beginning, you showed uh, a trailer for a movie. How can we see that movie? Um, the question was uh, the audience saw the trailer to your movie, Shoot First, Harry Benson. How can people see that movie now, Harry? Maybe Gigi could answer. Maybe as well. Gigi, and I would have. There's Michael Landis, one of them, and and my family are all down there. Oh, it's it's the, the it's on. You can see it on Hulu, right, Harry? Uh, uh, yeah. You can see it on Hulu, and I'm not sure. 
uh, where else, but um, it's worth, believe me, it is worth watching because you will learn more than you ever knew about Harry, even though you're here tonight. Go, next question. What did you find the difference between digital and film? Which did you like better? Um, the, the, like I think your question is, what do you like best when you shoot pictures, film or digital film? I, I really, I can't do anything about it. <laughs> Digital's here, so I've got to work my way around it. And I, I miss film, but, but if there's digital then... Of uh, progression, and also with digital, you don't come out with a disease in your hands or in your or in your eyes that you get from uh, you get from developing film and on the film itself. It, it caused a lot of people with coming out with awful sores. Yes. Oh no, but this doesn't happen now. So it's if you want to have swords, then get film, you know. <laughs> you want to break out and another question, Harry. Thank you for coming to us in Ventura. We love you. And out of all the incredible pictures you shot, what are your top three in your mind? What that? of all the incredible pictures you have taken, Harry, give us a quick rundown of the top three pictures. That you have, you think, you know, are your best. Um, yeah, it's it's my daughters Wendy and Tessa who are here, being born, but really and truly. We just would you both stand up? We are here, Tessa, Wendy. Stand no, stand up, stand up. No, uh, Wendy. Stand up. No, stand up. Okay, no, that is true. Um, who is um now the Beatles are very are very high, but there there again I am pleased I came out of the Kennedy assassination able to photograph it. You know, that was a hellish situation. Yeah, yeah, that was, uh, you know. I, th I think, um, do you have, uh, uh, Elena, you have some additional questions or? Yeah, when we're here, and then a few more. Yeah, okay. It, it seems like you and I have been on assignments together on various occasions. Was What's there that? ever an incident where you missed an assignment because the two of you were in a bar? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the, question, the question was from this gentleman, you and I did a lot of work together, but tell us how many times you missed a big story because you and I were getting drunk in the local Beverly Hills Hotel bar. I'll tell you something. When I miss it, the job is no point in going back and say, I missed it. You missed it, gone, that's it. I don't go back and say to my wife, Gigi, and. Oh, I missed a picture. No, you, it's gone. You know what I mean? You weren't fast enough. You weren't clever enough. You, I want to know how many times you all missed it because you all were drinking. A lot of times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Harry, <laughs> Harry, I told you not to answer that question. <laughs> but, you know, it didn't, if it didn't, if I didn't get it, it didn't exist. And, you know, and, and the editors would say to me, why didn't you get I never saw it, you know. Uh, no. And anyway, we were both pretty drunk at the yeah, time. Of course. <laughs> Next question, uh, please. We have a couple of questions from Zoom. Who are some photographers that inspire you? Uh, oh, they can hear it on Zoom. Who are some of the photographers that inspired you, Harry? Absolutely none of them. <laughs> Meaning, I was always jealous of somebody doing a... A, a, a better picture. You wanted to win the day, but there's a lot of good photographers. I'm just being a bit funny, you know. What I mean? But but still, like you were in a. Sometimes it was very competitive, you know, and nasty. You know, and 
uh, it wasn't a genteel business. No. Uh, next question from Zoom. No, uh, no I mean, what? Okay, next question from Zoom. Did JFK have a very strong presence? How uh, did he come off to you? Um, the question was, did John Fitzgerald Kennedy have a very strong presence when you shot him? I mean, I'm sorry, when you took pictures of him. <laughs> um, and and did, how, did, how did John Kennedy come across to you when you took his picture? Very amiable. She was more difficult. Jackie was more difficult that she would give you the impression she's going to smile at you, but then she would smile at somebody else, which was aggravating, you know? And, and did that to a lot of photographers. Yeah. Here we have one more very specific one on Zoom. Were you on the plane with the Beatles when they first came to America? JFK Airport, February 7th, 7th, 1964. Harry, the question was, on February the 7th, 1964, when the Beatles arrived in New York to do the Ed Sullivan show, were you on the aircraft with them? Yes, 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 I was there with them. And the first thing John Lennon said, there is no freedom rider to meet us, you know? Uh. And yes, I was on the plane and they were very nervous about it. They were worried about the reception because there was some negative reception, like it was people saying there were some of the things that were saying were communist. And there was a time of yeah. that. That mood. Yeah, John Lennon yeah. in particular said it. Yeah. I think this will have to be the last question. No, I'll be uh, here till... Uh, oh, Harry wants to stay all minutes. night. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I have a question. It seems like the pictures all tell a story. Do you, when you come to the shoot, do you have a predetermined idea of what you're looking for? Or do you get there and kind of operate on the instinct? To get yeah. the, the question is, when you go on assignment to shoot pictures, do you have a predetermined idea of what you are going to do when you get there you've you've got an idea of what what could happen but you're waiting for the unexpected just going completely wrong and that's really what you're looking for not it's what is right but what is wrong and and they'll be the most interesting picture because i hadn't been the photographer trying to control something and you know, and it becomes spontaneous. And I, I don't mean tragedy, but in happiness as, as well. You know, I was in tragedies, a few of them, but it, it, it's, it's unexpected you're looking for that makes it interesting. Something that you haven't seen before. Oh, I didn't know she was bald. You know what I mean? <laughs> I've been so you know what I mean. Well, I think I think on that bold note, um, we can we can say thank you, Harry Benson, for the thank you all very much. And you must, you must tell people uh, that if they love this show, support the museum. Elena. I want to say thank you. You can have a seat for a second because we have a, a special gift to give away. Um, I do want to say we thank you so much to both of you. And we have a couple more of those persons coming up. One a month today, four weeks from today, with Diane Lake. Oh, yeah. I'd like to read more about that. Oh, yeah. And one uh, five weeks after that with Bob Eubanks, as you've never seen him before. But I know you've all been waiting for this. We had a drawing for a signed book by Harry Vincent. Drum roll for one of our members. A bum. Oh, my gosh. What a tone. Wow. A lot of photos. And this goes to. 
Thank you so much to all of you for bringing us this There we go. Oh, uh, 